Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to the ticking clock room it seems somewhat apt that uh, I'm making a video about something that I've been waiting 11 months to make or I should say that's when I pre-ordered this you've seen the title I want to take a look at an unboxing not really an overview but we'll get to that of the PC Engine Core Graphics Mini so yeah it's a video I wanted to make at the start of March and then was thinking that unfortunately I would end up making it um, the end of the year sort of run up to Christmas and then found out that I would be making it the start of June so and also technically I've made this video already a month ago with the TurboGrafx 16 mini overview confused I am so anyway I'm probably going to retread a lot of the same things I'll try and keep it a little bit more interesting um, I may show you well I will show you a little bit of this system you know um, the interface and stuff like that but if you watch my TurboGrafx 16 mini video then you probably really don't even need to watch this video unless you want to see the aesthetics of how the console actually looks so anyway last year Konami announced that because they now own the rights to NEC and Hudson Soft that they were going to make three minis of the PC engine each was a region Variant. So you got the TurboGrafx-16 Mini in North America, then you have the PC Engine Mini in Japan, and then in Europe you would have the PC Engine Core Graphics Mini, because I guess they wanted to separate it out like um, Nintendo did the SNES Mini, uh, you know, being different, the Super Famicom, the SNES, and the, the butt ugly, really sort of squared off SNES in North America. Sorry North America, I think your SNES is butt ugly. Then obviously you had the Japanese Mega Drive, you know, variant of the Mini, the UK variant of the Mini, and then you had the Sega Genesis. So it made sense that they would tread in their footsteps, especially when you consider the M2. Uh, or have done, you know, have done the uh, the emulation and stuff like that. And um, also, it's it's kind of interesting that these are variants that are restricted to. They're Amazon exclusives, and you can only buy said model in each region apart from Japan, where you can buy all three models. But if you watch my TurboGrafx 16 mini video, you will know that I tried and I tried and I tried, and uh, then I cried because I couldn't. My credit card just is not compatible with Amazon of Japan. So then. I imported, well I didn't import, I found, I mean you can buy the other variants of this on Amazon UK if you want, I would suggest just hope you don't have an AtWest credit card and bugger off to Amazon Japan, but you can buy them on you know, eBay where you probably pay, pay a pretty penny or you can go to the private sellers on Amazon UK, so that's why I bought TurboGrafx-16 Mini uh, and I did not pay through the roof, I paid 30 quid more than I would for you know um, what it well it, they're hundred quid basically I mean even though you couldn't buy it in this country they're all the same price whatever region they come from you know give or take a few pence and stuff like that so while I have nostalgia for the TurboGrafx 16 because I had one in 1991 and I never had a PC engine brother did um, I didn't want a TurboGrafx I, I you know it's my one of my favorite minis now I absolutely love it but I just I was never a massive fan of the TurboGrafx 16 I thought it wasn't a very attractive looking console so I ordered because it was an Amazon exclusive in this country, the PC Engine Core Graphics uh, Mini. And the irony being with that, because PC Engine, again, I'm crossing streams with a lot of stuff from the previous video. PC Engine in this country, thanks to Me Machines and uh, CBG, was the stuff of legend. It never got an official release. There was a kind of bodge UK Turbo Graphics release, and very few sort of companies, small companies in Europe, may have imported them and converted them themselves. But there was no official UK uh, or European release. So that's why it's kind of strange that they decided to take the core graphics mini and say here you go Europe and I guess Australia New Zealand this is the model for you but obviously they just wanted to split it up into regions because obviously the core graphics was a Japanese machine there was no Western release and the difference between the core graphics I'm waffling already I know and the PC engine was not just a color but it was um and the logo core graphics uh, it was the fact that its TV out was different or something like that other than that it was pretty much exactly the same but it came with turbo pads but the original original PC engine in Japan did not are you bored yet? So anyway, I got the TurboGrafx-16 and, you know, I thought I'm not going to cancel. 
I'm not going to cancel uh, my order for the core graphics, expecting it to you know, show up at Christmas. I thought, no, I'll keep it. I'll keep one stock. I'm going to keep the core graphics stock. Uh, and I'll, you know, hack the other one because the hacks, you can see videos on it in YouTube land. It's, you know, it's out and about. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a true blue mini and I'll, you know, I'll hack that. And, you know, and so I'll have one shiny and fantastic box fresh. And the other one is the one I'm going to you know, put bells and whistles on. Here's the other thing, right? They kind of put it under the radar telling you that your order was on hold indefinitely. Then when it popped back up, um, they didn't tell you. And the only reason I knew was I ordered it with an older um, debit card and I've since replaced that debit card. So, again, I'll get to the point in a minute. I got a message saying, you need to check your payment details. And I went, wait, what? Uh, oh, oh, you're sending it to me. I can have it by tomorrow, June the 6th. If I order it, it will change my card details now. Thanks on both those occasions, Amazon. And it came out, what, a few weeks ago in America, maybe a month. Uh, so this whole kind of because of the coof uh, thing just seems a bit of a mess by Amazon UK. Anyway, I'll get to the point now. So... It arrived. I have not opened it. This flap I have pulled open because I've seen people show you on, and there's a bit of box art coming off there, how tightly packed this is, and I did not want to spoil the box. Anyway, now, obviously the PC Engine uh, is a lot smaller than the Turbo Graphics, so if you hold the boxes together, they're in, you know, they're relative to their parents' boxes size to some degree. And I'm hoping that means that the consoles, because I've got my Turbo Graphics Mini down there, are also somewhat relevant to each other uh, compared to their parent sizes, if that makes sense. Anyway, it's an absolutely lovely box. I'll try and keep clear to a minimum. So you've got your core graphics, PC Engine core graphics, you've got uh, PC Engine core graphics mini, and above it, I guess it says that in Japan, uh, and then picture, pad, pad came with turbos is standard. This is a really, really, really nice box. That's why I'm never putting this back in, because I don't want to damage it. If you look on the back, it's interesting, because you have all your PC Engine games listed at the top, and your turbo graphics at the bottom, which is the vice versa of the turbo graphics mini box. So I do like that, I really, really do like that. The thing about this is, uh, I'm not sure, but, if this is supposed to be like a you know the the European version, then the 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 actual white PC Engine one has you know a couple of different games, and I believe the Splatterhouse isn't censored. But seeing as this is European version, I believe Splatterhouse. Don't quote me on this; I've not found it up yet. Is censored? Yeah, it's in a Japanese box, and it's a Japanese you know his parent machine is Japanese. It seems a bit weird. Anyway, it's a really really nice box. Again, you've got your game libraries just reverse there and stuff like that so anyway i've waffled long enough let's crack into it because i really want to see what this machine looks like i know there's a million videos out there on youtube land it's nice sturdy box as i mentioned in my previous video but i gotta have one myself i really really do and there we go now what's interesting is because again you think you got to think of the relevance of the machine compared to the original machine back in the day so you get a manual uh it's not color which is you know, what are you going to do? Annoying for me, but everyone's cheap these days. And it gives you all your guff and stuff like that. But the manual is bigger and square as opposed to, again, it's little details like this that I love. I mean, you really don't need this, but it's bigger and square as opposed to the more rectangular and smaller turbo graphics manual. So that's really, really, really cool. Uh, no power brick. Everyone knows that. I still think that's cheap. Even though we've got loads of them, it's still cheap. Uh, pad we'll look at the pad first another hdmi lead to add to the collection of massive hdmi leads i have i guess you can never have too many so it's the same as its parent pad again uh i've checked these online and can confirm much like the turbo graphics pad which i showed in my video are uh, that one that um these are stiff and they do feel hollow these are very stiff but supposedly they wear in it comes with uh Turbo switch is a standard, but it's slightly smaller than an actual core graphics pad. I don't know why. Maybe that's just the OCD and me complaining because I want everything to be completely and utterly accurate. But it's a nice looking pad. I don't have a core graphics pad to compare it to. My actual PC Engine pad is an aftermarket one and has you know turbo switches anyway, so it's not uh, auto fire as we like to say in the good old UK. It's not really you know fair to hold that against this, but you know. It does what it does. It's ever so slightly smaller uh, replica of its parent machine's pad, and it comes with turbo. I don't know what iteration, did they release an iteration of the original white PC engine in Japan eventually, a year or so later, or a few years later, we got turbo pads, or did you have to buy them separately? Because then that would be, sucks to be you. Um, and again, what was the difference in TV? The, the RF to AV, or I don't know. Then you get your little console, as I said, so it's a smaller box, it's a squarer box. They it's all these little details that, you know, so it's, 
obviously, I guess they could have made the Turtle Graphics 16 Mini smaller and put it in a box the same size as this, but I don't know. It's not that much smaller than its parent console, but I like, I kind of like, you know, the way they've done this. That was the power lead, by the way. The, the um, <laughs> I'm so professional, me. The, uh, I don't even know why you see the z 3 i lead is under there. So let's have a look at the machine. I do like these baggies. They're very, very nice. And it is a thing of beauty. Look at that. So you've got the Core Graphics logo. I really do think this thing is a looker. And you have the expansion port covering the back. Now, while you could argue this is more handy and less of a uh, an irritant or fiddly than you know the Turbo Graphics 16. I guess this is now a comparison between the Core Graphics Mini and the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. I don't know. I'll think of something in the title. Um, you, you could lose it because you have to take it off to plug the stuff in. I do like this. The whole rigmarole of having to take the back end off your, uh, you know, they've made it accurate, basically. I mean, watch my Turbo Graphics video. They've made it accurate with the whole this thing on the end being removed. But the fact that you have to put a power, I'll show you, because you might not have watched that video. You have to put the power in and pull it out, wrap it round here, go sideways. It's just a pain in the ass, and I don't like bending cables. They could have just put that on the back. So I guess it swings and roundabouts while you could lose this. Obviously, I won't because I'm OCD about such things. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a better way to plug it in, but that's really, really, really nice. There's your card slot, obviously, nothing there, you know, to go in there. You've got your your power switch. I do like the fact that the original machines never actually had an LED light, you know, like other consoles. It was just, there was a coloured check, but uh, two USB sockets there, and it's also got the card lock. Again, these are all tiny, silly, pointless things, but just an absolute, I just, I just love. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Let's compare it to an actual PC engine. Not a core graphics, but my PC engine, not my box PC engine. I could have bought that down, but that's in the attic because that's 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 staying safe. But my rather beat up and in need of retro bright, can you even buy that in this country? PC engine. The size difference really isn't that big, is it? It really, really isn't that big. But you can see, obviously, the paint job on this one's different. I forgot to mention your little attention to detail on the side here where it's got the arrows pointing to where the TV would go. And I didn't even show that to you. But, yeah, so it's really not that big a difference in size. You know, that's really, it's almost a mini console when it wasn't a mini console before it was a mini console. That got away from me. But yeah, they're just, even with the way they've done the sort of the markings and stuff on the bottom, they are in the correct places and stuff like that. Look at that, the bottom of it is white, where it's not being exposed to the elements. So, it's an absolute, we knew it was going to be from the last video I did, you know, on the, the demographic. So, yeah, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Let's compare the size to that. So, the only thing I can think of, and I did not bring my turbo graphics down because, well, I forgot. And <laughs> this video is getting massively waffleage already. But, um, yeah, I'm guessing that this is, you know, relevant to the size of this. That this would be to my turbo graphics but then I'm, I'm just guessing so i could be wrong so anyway yeah i've been waiting forever for this i've been waiting forever for this and you know what I, it does not disappoint in the flesh i've seen a lot of videos but it really does not disappoint in the flesh i try and not get shadow on my face but then you want to see this and not me it's a really really nice compact design the attention to detail is absolutely fantastic for the sake of doing so if only for me i will jump uh I'll jump into the other room and plug it into the tv and just have a quick little play around just so i can say look I showed you uh, the contents of the device, but I want to talk about that at the end of this video, about which one of these should you buy. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to, like I said, if you want to see a proper, proper overview of, you know, what the console is like, have a look at my TurboGrafx. I'll put a, a link in the doohickey down below. Have a look at my TurboGrafx 16 Mini video. Have a drinking game to the number of times I say Mini in this video. But yeah, I'll put a link to that because you really, I'm not, I'm just going to have a little, you know, play around here, but that's kind of, you know, more bells, whistles, nuts and bolts of what's going on. Anyway, let's uh, let's fire it up. So here we go, I've just fired it up and uh, right off the bat you can see we're in the TurboGrafx-16 side of things. Across these three systems, the interface uh, and the contents are essentially exactly the same, obviously with the difference in some of the games being different on you know the white PC Engine model. But what's interesting about this is it jumps straight into the TurboGrafx-16 uh, menu. 
because obviously this would be the Western, you know, release. We never got it in the UK, and obviously the uh, the white PC Engine version. If you fire that up, if you have that, I have seen videos on it. It jumps directly into the PC Engine uh, console at the top of the screen and lists the games as default, which makes sense because that's Japan's, you know, iteration. In fact, you can buy them all off Amazon. Is by the way, that's you know Japan's default version of the console. So this kicks into this, as I said, I can only guess because even though the core graphics is essentially a Japanese model, they've marketed it, you know, with these kind of regional differences as the. Uh, the skip, skip, skip to the end as the uh, you know the European one. So it makes sense that we go with uh, that there. But if you uh, where is it settings? Uh, well, hang on a minute. We we'll just press fire here. If you skip it and go into PC Engine, it does go to the core graphics, um, which it did on the PC Engine as well. The uh, graphics as well, to be fair. So it goes to the core graphics, you know, like console at the top and stuff like that. It doesn't go to uh, the the uh, PC Engine version. Although this would be where your Japanese games are, which you know, uh, and there are crossovers between the Japanese <clears throat> and the Turbo Graphics games. And particularly if we go into settings, I'll just show you this before I make my point. Go into settings. So you've got your user manual, which obviously you scan that. I mean, that's better than nothing, I guess. Um, even though you've got one, kind of one in the box. Uh, display settings, you've got all your filters, all your stuff like that. Uh, there are scan lines available, 16 by now. We don't know why you would want to do that. But the fact that you can have it is cool. Same with this. It's uh, it's a GT, or Turbo Express. The fact that you can have this, even though it makes playing games almost impossible, because trust me, I tried playing ghosts, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts with it. <laughs> And it was balls hard. Balls harder than it's normally balls hard. But it's there if you want it. I like that. I like attention to detail such as the little PC engine sitting at the top. There. I am aware I'm crossing over facts with what I did on my Telegraphic 16 mini video. But I just wanted to put this in here in case people only saw you know, this version. So return to menu. Go down to wallpaper. Again, our purist. It will only ever be on black. You know. But does not mean I don't appreciate them putting the other ones in here. Down here, menu design, this is where you change. Because, right, when you select turret graphics or you select uh, the PC Engine mode, it'll only go from um, <clears throat> one, one, one version of the PC Engine. You can see here its default on this version is the core graphics. But if you want to go to just to have it, you know, the PC Engine, the white console and stuff like that, then you do that and you go there and then you return to uh, menu and now you've got this but obviously the list of games there is exactly the same as the core graphics list of games and herein lies my problem which I'll touch upon at the end of the video by simply saying because there are crossover games in here uh, to the North American games list, the Turbo Graphics games list, all I'm going to say is Splatterhouse but I'll make that point later on but while we're in here we may as well try a game I'll try what I didn't do in my previous video um, that. Gingu Fukai Densetsu Safa, which is an insanely again the, the, the it's, it, it sticks in the the CD um, pro card and then you get to see the CD spin up and you can hear it. I love stuff like that. I absolutely love stuff like that. Yes, I am aware I have got a massive sense of deja vu right now, but I've done a gameplay of this before, um, and yeah, it's insanely expensive, but it's an incredibly impressive game. I'm not sure it's a nice C, I'm not sure it's a nice touch that the loading times are in real time, but hey, what are you going to do? What he says. Right, I've done a gameplay of it before, so if you want to know story stuff like that, watch the video. This is a system overview. Hammer button, if in doubt, hammer buttons. Now, there are no polygons or anything like that whatsoever in this game, it's all just clever sprites. But it looks phenomenal, and also we've got turbo switches. Oh, I love you turbo switches. Skip, 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 skip to the end. Yeah, this is a stunning looking game. See? Always looks like it's got scaling. You ain't... You ain't... Well, you get the impression, don't you? We'll have a look at a couple more games on this. Oh, hello. Well, anyway, pause and select to exit. And then you've got your, your save states there. So, uh, save. Uh, yes. There you go, and you got four save states for each game. Return to menu, yes. It does mean with save states, you can actually crawl through games bit by bit if they're balls hard. Um, what other ones are in here? PC Engine Kid. Sna again, Snatcher. I why? I like the fact that you did it, and I know this thing will eventually be hacked, but why didn't you just put an English version of it in here? Seriously, this is where I mean it. The crossover in the games is kind of uh, a little bit odd. Um, 
Yeah, we won't have a look at the Kung Fu. The Wonder of Blood. Uh, a look at Bomberman. Such a nice thing. I know deja vu. All right, skip, 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 skip to the end. On my 94. It's on the Mega Drive as well, wasn't it? But it was called something else. Um, I think your world gets split into many different places and zones. Anyway, place a bomb, blow stuff up, and I suck at it. So there. Get out of the way, you blast. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This isn't a game review. Look at the, bo the boxing bunny. Bye. There you go. And I'll smell burning. Look, he turned into what's his name? Zoidberger from uh, Futurama. Right. Oh yeah! Anyway, there you go. Right, uh, return to the menu. Uh, yes, because I don't want to save anything. And then we'll flip back to... There we go. Telegraphics. I love that effect. So yeah, all in all, this is just fantastic place to be. I mean, you've even got the god-awful North American box art, because I think we can all agree it's god awful. Uh, so look at Ninja Spirits, and then I'm going to jump back and uh, round up and make my points about the crossover of games in Splatterhouse. Right, anyway. I used to have a original copy of this that I bought in Boston in 1991, and I'm happy about this. I traded it, I don't know why I'm telling you this, I traded it um, with someone for a mint copy of uh, Magical Flying Hat Turbo Adventure. Uh, Japanese, on the Megadon. Well, of course it's Japanese, it would be the Cap Attack otherwise. This is a stunning port. Seriously. It's an awesome game, too. But anyway, so all in all, you know, the save states, again, yes, I am where I've talked about this in a previous video, but, you know, different system. Hub systems will travel. Uh, yeah, just a nice place to be, attention to detail stuff. You really don't need uh, switching between, you know, Turbo Graphics and PC Engine or some touch, rather than, I guess, having them on the same screen at the same time. Some people say they kind of would have preferred that. Not me, I like what they've done, I really, really do. You know, scanline filters, you know, 16 by 9 you know, and all that stuff, you know, whether you want it or not, you can have it. And, yeah, it just, it's brilliant. This this is hands down, even before I played this one, but this is essentially just a turbo graphics, isn't it? My favourite mini. It really, really is. Uh, anyway, let's go back and round up. So there you go, that was just a little, tiny, tiny, tiny little, you know, play around with it. Um, Things I want to say basically is rounding it up. Uh, am I glad I got it? Do I need to own two of them? I am glad I got it because ultimately this is the design I wanted. I got the 16 Mini because I could not get this or could not be bothered to wait for this to arrive in the mail. And the fact that it's shown up a little bit quicker than I thought it would be um, a few months after its official release and what, a month after its North American release, you know, maybe egg on my face, but at the same time, I am kind of, you know, like I said, I'm going to hack one, I'm not going to hack the other one. So that's kind of cool. And it is cool because uh, the, the, the weird thing is the difference in the appearance between this and the TurboGrafx-16 makes owning one of each, you know, kind of cool. Not uh, owning this in the PC Engine model, even though you could argue um, that the PC Engine model, um, you know, has a couple of different games. Which model should you buy? Uh, I basically, I guess it comes down to two things, nostalgia and aesthetics. Which one did you have back in the day, which one did you grow up? I think, you know, the majority of North Americans, unless people are complete, you know, out and out collectors, are gonna get a Turbo Graphics, aren't they? Because that was part of their childhood. You know, however poorly it did, they still had a core user base who absolutely loved it. And nostalgia means that even people who didn't are gonna buy it now, but gonna buy the one that would have been available in their country. I'm sure the ones of choice in Japan will be, obviously, the, uh, you know, because they, they can buy all three, will be the PC Engine one. Uh, and obviously we have to buy this in the UK if you don't go the import route. The thing that does annoy me is why, as, as I mentioned at the start of this video, considering this is aimed at the UK, but this never came out in the UK and it was a Japanese machine, why did they put a slight, slightly different games? It's not a deal breaker by any means, you know, slightly different games on the, you know, the, the white PC Engine model. I, I guess completionists or Sony just wanted to have all the games so they maybe they just buy two of the systems. It, it seems a bit of a cash grab and also I can understand you know putting um, the, the censored version of Splatterhouse on you know uh, the turbo graphics and obviously they've got to put it on this because this is the PAL machine at least for now so we probably would have had a censored version of turbo graphic a turbo graphic of Splatterhouse 
But seeing as some of the games cross over, because it's 57 games, but there are duplicates between, and, and the governments, like the, the contents with these, except for the couple of different games on the PC Engine, you know, the, 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 the original PC Engine, the, the contents of all these machines are exactly the same, especially the way they are displayed. So, when you got this cross, this is one, the only thing I can argue is disappointment, which I probably should have mentioned in the, the Turbo Graphics video, um, the only thing that's a disappointment is, there is no reason to give us, give the West, uh, the censored version of a Splatterhouse and not give us the uncensored version of Splatterhouse in the PC Engine games. I mean, you give us China Warrior, then you give us the Kung Fu, and I forget the other games, but there are duplicates, so that is a fail. I do not know. If anyone knows why they did that, please let me know. That is a massive fail to me. You should not have to buy, you know, or if, if, if you're going the route of not importing it and going with your Amazon exclusive, you should not have to buy, uh, you know, another one to get... That kind of makes sense, you know what I mean. <laughs> I should not have to buy the white one to, to get an uncensored version of Splathouse. I mean, all of this will be um, irrelevant and redundant when things hang, but the point being, I don't like that. You've got duplicate games across the North American and the Japanese uh, collections on the system when you jump between, you know, PC Engine and TurboGrafx. So why is there no uncensored Splatterhouse? But yeah, what do you buy? You buy the one you have nostalgia for, as I said, or you buy the one that you like the aesthetics for. Because I'm not going to lie, I, I never intended to get one of these, but I have nostalgia for it because I owned it, even though it never came out in the UK. But I wanted this because, you know, it's a better looking machine. I know taste is subjective, but I really do think this is an absolutely good look. Sorry. Try and get, there we go, absolutely gorgeous looking machine, you know, it just, even back in the day, it was minimalist and just years ahead of everything else, and it's, it's minim minimalistic and just outright cheeky, stunning little design. This video has been all over the shop, but I, I had to, my OCD would not let me not do a video on the PC Engine Core Graphics. Uh, mini when it finally arrived. If you, like I said, if you want to know all about the contents and what it's like to run, then you probably could have skipped this whole video. I'd like to think I'm entertaining enough for you to watch at least, I don't know, 35 seconds of it. But yeah, go to that, go to that Turbo Graphics video, you know, and just watch the chunk in the middle. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super happy and I'm glad I've got both. Uh, I, you know, I don't feel like I've doubled up for no reason, even though it was kind of all because of the stuff happening right now. Waffle over, all over the shop, waffle over. Anyway, as always, I'd love to know what you think. Did you get one in the end? Did you get one in import? Did your original order then arrive? Because I know Guru Larry said the same thing to me in the comments section, that now I've got two as well. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.